Portions of the superb Powell building stood when General Sherman's soldiers set up camp on the grounds in transit from Atlanta to the ocean. When the middle house chairman, with patience into monster wings, today just a negligible portion of the structure is being used, obliging state staff and workers of a redevelopment authority. In 1837, Georgia lawmakers authorized a lunatic, idiot, an epileptic asylum. Five years later, the facility opened as the Georgia Lunatic Asylum on the outskirts of the cotton, rich town that served as the antebellum state capital. The first patient, Tillman B. of Bibb County, arrived in December 1842. He died of maniacal exhaustion before the next summer, a long lobby in the 181,582 square foot Powell building gives a sign of the immense number of patients once housed at Focal State, up to 13,000 during its peak. Many more patients followed Mr. B, and the foundation developed into the biggest mental hospital on the planet. Hundred years after it opened, 200 structures spread more than 2,000 sections of land and housed up to 13,000 patients at what was then called Focal State Clinic. Be that as it may, all through Georgia, it was known exclusively by the name of the adjoining town, Milledgeville. Guardians regularly reproved making trouble kids with the danger. I will send you to Milledgeville. Georgia writer Terry Kay reviews that as a kid during the 1940s, it was one of only a handful of exceptional words with extraordinary power. It was an expression of dread and secret, a word that ordered entertaining individuals. Thousands of Georgians were shipped to Milledgeville, often with unspecified conditions, or disabilities that did not warrant a classification of mental illness, with little more of a label than funny. The hospital outgrew its resources. By the 1950s, the staff to patient ratio was a miserable one to 100. Doctors wielded the psychiatric tools of the time's lobotomies, insulin shock, and early electroshock therapy, along with far less sophisticated techniques. Children were confined to metal cages, Adults were forced to take steam baths and cold showers, confined in straitjackets, and treated with douches or nausants. It has witnessed the heights of man's humanity and the depths of his degradation. Dr. Peter G. Cranford, the chief clinical psychologist at the hospital in 1952, wrote in his book, But for the grace of God, the inside story of the world's largest insane asylum. A 1999 U.S. Supreme Court ruling in a Georgia case allows patients with mental health problems to choose community care over institutionalization if a professional agrees, and following a 2010 agreement with the federal government, Georgia will move all mentally and developmentally disabled patients to community facilities. Central state stopped accepting new patients in 2010, as the asylum's buildings were vacated four were converted into prisons. One prison remains on the property today. In a separate facility, the Cook Building, the hospital houses 
179 forensic patients who have been found by courts to be not guilty by reason of insanity or incompetent to stand trial. Today only 14 non-forensic patients remain at Central State. All elderly people awaiting alternative placements. By the end of this year, the State Department of Behavioral Health and Disabilities, which operated at Central State, will occupy only nine buildings, with fewer than 200 patients on the campus, and only a handful of administrative officers operating, Central State feels abandoned. Indeed, several of the starkly beautiful brick buildings on the quad surrounding a lush pecan grove have been boarded up since the late 1970s and have begun to decay into haunted ruins. Yet amid the entropy, life goes on. Church services are still held in the chapel on the quad, which hosts weddings and funerals. Some 2,000 cast iron markers at Cedar Lane Cemetery commemorate the 25,000 patients buried on the hospital grounds. The markers, with numbers instead of names, once identified individual graves but were pulled up and tossed into the woods by a knowing prison inmates working as groundskeepers to make mowing easier. 